You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. And some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. Uh, just so you guys know, I might actually be working on a visual novel with uh, some with a friend of mine on Telegram. Um, uh, I would be a writer for it. Uh, we're still kind of getting things together right now, but so you know, right now it's just in the planning phases. But hey, <laughs> when, who knows? One day I might be uh, playing though the very own game I worked on on this channel. All right, let's uh, jump right into it, shall we? All right, start alarm chin. Okay, guys, sit back and enjoy. Eventually, he approaches me and crouches next to the bed so that our eyes are on the same level. He gently squeezes my shoulder with his paw, one of his fangs poking out through a goofy smile. I won't be long, he says encouragingly. Once I'm back, we'll be able to talk some more, okay? I nod and snicker, hearing his tooth swish against the wooden, f hearing his tail swish against the wooden floor in excitement. The way he wags his tail in such, with such enthusiasm almost begs the question why the whole place is so dirty. One does not even need a broom with a wolf like that around. Ah. Ran it! The female calls out impatiently from the other room. Just, uh, <clears throat> just stay out of sight. I'll be fine. I reassure him, but then I hear a deep rumble inside my stomach. The cramps make me squirm as if I, ne if I had never eaten a meal before. I'm ravenous, and I think the stress of the situation is the only thing that kept my attention away from it. If I could only have something to eat... I see the wolf look at me with a troubled expression, as if he didn't factor in that I require sustenance. Rennick slaps his forehead in deep annoyance. Spirits! I'm so stupid! What is it now? The black wolf calls out from the other room, appearing in the doorway. How are we going to feed him? I can eat pretty much anything. I mumble, although the idea of raw meat is making me queasy. Fuck! Vulgar's resigned curse makes me think that my diet is not the main problem here. Oh, shit. Oh, that's not good. We eat together as a tribe. Only mothers with pups are allowed to eat separately. Smuggling food home is looked down upon as a sign of gluttony. And would immediately rouse suspicion. I looked to Rannick's, Rannick's troubled expression. I could see he didn't think this through. None of it. But as he meets my worried gaze, his expression changes immediately. I'll get you some food. One second, guys. Let me take a sip of my water. Alleviate my scratchy throat. There we go. He says determined, but slightly but slight unease lines his voice. No, I'll do it. We both looked to Vul with surprise. I'll be keeping an eye on the house anyway. He shrugs with a hint of embarrassment. Even Rannick picks up on it, smirking. Hey, you're warming up to Orion, aren't you? Psst. As if, as if, you idiot. It's just super, it's just easier that way. It's just super easier that way. The black male scoffs indignantly. No one would dare follow me. Once the feast starts, I'll bring the piglet some roast. I hope roasted meat agrees with you. I smile in relief as the thought of eating raw, eating raw was banished by his words. Why did I assume they would eat anything uncooked when they're clearly, clearly as civilized as I am? Let's go. Vulgar utters impatiently, tapping his foot against the ground and causing Rannick to stand up. The gray wolf winks at me while tilting his head towards the small window. Stay out of sight. I nod as he, as he follows his companions out of the bedroom. They close the doors behind, and a moment later I can hear them leave the house together. I am finally alone. I look around the tiny room, idly padding at the bedding. There isn't much noise, mostly some distant chatter I can't make out, muffled voices too far away to be intelligible. What I do hear is the forest, wind ruffling and the leaves and birds chirping in nearby trees. I am tempted to approach the window and simply take in the scenery, but I know better. Close my eyes and chuckle nervously. This is utter nonsense. I must be dreaming. Or maybe I am the one who huffed some incense? Save it right here, guys. Whatever the case, I'm exhausted by all this, so I allow my head to fall freely onto the pillow. 
I collapse into the fabric, allowing it to wrap around me in a warm embrace. It only takes me a moment to sink down into it. Snugness makes my eyelids droop instantly, as heavy as if they were made of lead. For some odd reason, I feel extremely exhausted, almost as if staying awake was unnatural to me. I guess that's what stress does to you. I try to look at the ceiling for a bit, seeking patterns in the naked woodwork, locating different burls and knots within the natural grain of the planks. I yawn, closing my eyes as I let the fatigue overtake me, and I drift away into a peaceful sleep. I suddenly wake to a loud, resonating thud. I get up immediately, seeing the room covered in darkness. It's clearly night. How long was I asleep? Another thud makes me jump, but this time I know where it's coming from. Someone's banging on the window. Rannick? I call out quietly towards the next room. I know the male went to deal with his tribesmen, but I hope he already returned. The banging continues, this time more impatient, and I start to panic. I look towards the window, trying to remain hidden within the shadows of the room. Am I supposed to be seen? I can make out a large, dark figure, obviously a wolf. I think it might be one of the tribesmen snooping around. Wasn't Vulgar supposed to make sure this didn't happen? Open the damn window! I hear the familiar, cold voice next hell in relief. I approach the window, feeling a lot less worried than before, quickly locating the latch, holding it closed. Both wings open with a tortured creak, obviously not used to being swung ajar. <laughs> Here's your chow, piglet. The wolf passes me a sizable bundle wrapped in a linen cloth. Thank you. I respond, taking the parcel. I smile, feeling the aroma of roasted meat hit my nostrils. I'd nearly forgotten how hungry I am. Aren't you going to come in? What are you cats doing, being sillies? No one lives with Rannick and he's not home. Besides, it's already night. I look around, noticing how dark the outside world has gotten. Can he have a friend over? I ask, slowly unfolding the cloth. Not overnight. The black male responds, almost appalled by the suggestion. Why? Because that would make them both look... defective. I make a dumb huh sound, to which he only gives me a telling gaze. Oh! Guess wolves don't like homosexuality. But just because two guys are alone in the same room at night doesn't mean they... I try to rationalize, but I can see his rising brow with each word I utter. Yeah, that does sound a bit off now that I think about it. Is that why you're standing outside the window? Afraid I would seduce you? To my surprise, Vogel snorts at the suggestion and almost smiles. An actual pig would have better chances at that. I raise an eyebrow with a challenging smirk. It seems more suspicious to have males sneaking about windows rather than having them over for a drink. Bulger narrows his brows, looking at me with slight amusement. You couldn't drink or you might have a piss bucket, suckling. Ouch. The jab wasn't malicious, but ouch. He's definitely being playful, but considering choking me out was his gentler side, why would I expect his verbal spars to be any tamer? I just shake my head with a smile. At least having a female over has to be normal around here, right? I don't believe even for a moment this village is full of celibate homophobes. What are you animals doing? Being sillies. How about a lady caller, then? Can he have those over? Pulgar snorts again. He can. And as much as you do sound like a little bitch, it's a small tribe. Save right here. I nearly choke at the sharp remark, looking at Vol with obvious annoyance. He clearly enjoys at least one of his jabs finally landed. Having a female over is quite hard to misunderstand. A mate leads to rumors, rumors raise suspicion, and suspicion leads to wolves sniffing about. We wouldn't want that, would we? I shrug, finally opening the parcel to reveal its contents. It's filled with succulent cuts of meat. They don't look the most appetizing, mostly shredded apart without a care, but the smell alone is enough to make my mouth water. I quickly glance around, really troubled by our little rendezvous. It does look quite conspicuous. Don't worry, I'll know if anyone gets close enough to vanish in time. I flash my brows indifferently. Guess not only Rannick is full of himself. I quickly grab one of the chunks and bring it to my lips. Volger gazes at me with extreme curiosity, but I'm far too hungry to pay him any mind. I take a ravenous bite. The meat falls apart the slightest touch of my tongue, almost melting inside my mouth. 
I gasp in satisfaction, closing my eyes in complete bliss. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's very good. But no matter how hard I try, I cannot figure out what it is that I'm actually eating. Despite my memory being wiped clean, I can still recall certain things. I remember how chicken tastes, or beef. This is something different entirely. I take another chunk, hastily shuffling, hastily stuffing, stuffing its hole into my mouth. Stuffing it whole into my mouth. God, I'm hungry and this meat is hitting the spot. It tastes like nothing I ever knew. It's slightly sweet and has an earthy, almost nutty flavor to it. So good. What is it? I ask, still chewing through the sinew, forgetting my manners for a moment. It's going to be something terrible, isn't it? Oh, boar, okay. Roasted boar. The male responds. There's an odd discomfort in his voice, but I ignore him. I'm utterly consumed by this meal, as I can finally feel the large void in my stomach fill up. It's almost as if I haven't eaten it forever. I take another piece of meat, reveling in its tenderness and juices. This is going to make me sick. The black male finally catches my attention with his troubled confession. I can see his distress, as if he was truly struggling to keep down his own meal. Woff? I ask, mouth still full of meat, as I lick my greasy fingers. I wondered how you could eat without a muzzle, but... This? He struggles, covering his snout as one does it to stop a reflux. You're just stuffing it into a hole in your head. I blink in confusion as the male turns away from me. Is he serious? He's really unsettled by just watching me eat. I chuckle, making nothing of it, and continue with my meal. The idea of this large, cold warrior getting weak at the knees because of my mouth is too much. I'm about to laugh when... Blah! What the? Volgar has just wrenched a few steps away from the window. I look at his crouching figure in momentary disbelief, but as he purges again, I immediately take my food off the ledge. I know that if the acidy smell hits my nose, I will join him in emptying my own stomach, so I quickly close the window. I stand there, looking for any signs of him getting better, but after a while, I bring another piece of meat to my mouth with a shrug. Just eating, just eating meat while your uh, acquaintance over there is barfing his guts up. I'm still hungry, after all. Finally, Volger appears on the other side of the glass, looking at me with an accusatory gaze. I pause, but his embarrassment makes me chuckle, and then I lose it. I explode in loud laughter, which causes the male to wave at me in panic. It only makes me laugh harder. I can't believe I made this wolf sick just by eating. Shh! Be quiet! He shushes me, but I'm unable to rein myself in. Close the window, close the window. Shut up, flat face, or I'll come in there and choke you again. He finally growls in playful annoyance. I hush down, looking at him with a smirk. Flat face? You really need to keep quiet. If anyone finds you here... I know, I know. Is it right here? I roll my eyes. But I really think you three are exaggerating a little bit. I blurt out, causing the black wolf's eyes to narrow. Your people wouldn't kill me just because I got lost in their woods. I mean, even you understand this isn't right. You know nothing, Piglet. Cats are playing with the pizza box. You know nothing, Jon Snow. I shrug, continuing to nibble on the meat. I'll only tell you this so that you have no illusions about this not being serious. Long ago, a Tiggery noble desecrated our grove. Desecrate how? He carved his name into one of the name trees. I narrow my brow, looking at him with confusion. Isn't that what a name tree is for? Like, a uh, I've been here kind of thing? No. He says with a deadly serious tone, his joviality now completely gone. They are sacred to my people. They supposedly keep the spirits of our ancestors tethered to this world. How does that work? The wolf waves his paw at me dismissively. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that we issued punishment, as was our right, despite knowing it would cause a war. A war we had little hope of winning. Wait, you killed someone just because of graffiti? Maybe. If you live long enough, you will understand. For now, just accept that, a, that to us, damaging a name tree is one of the worst crimes one can commit. I shake my head in disbelief. Was it really worth starting a war over? We didn't start it, the tigers did. 
because you killed one of their own over something so... Don't talk about things you have no understanding of. He raises his voice ever so slightly as he stifles a growl. Those trees are definitely a sore spot for the wolves. Our world ceased to exist long, long ago. Other kin saw to it. This forest and our traditions are all we have left of what was lost. I can detect an odd twinge of sadness and a longing in his voice, something I've never heard before from the male. The wolves will go to any lengths to protect what's left, even if it means going to war. If anyone learns that you're here, a lynch mob would have torn you to shreds before any of us had a chance to react. I stop eating, feeling the weight of his words finally sink in. Despite not really understanding the full context of what he said, it's clear that the wolves hate Otherkin. I'm... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. The black male looks at me with annoyance for a moment before exhaling heavily. Just... take this seriously. It's enough that Radek makes light of the situation. I don't want to lose my moon brother, not because of... He cuts himself off, looking at me with almost apologetic gaze. Me. I finished the sentence for him, although I'm sure he meant to use some sort of an insult. It's nothing personal. I know. And I'll be careful. Believe me, I don't... I do not have a death wish. The black wolf smirks at me, most likely trying to lighten the situation. Oh? Well, you could have fooled me. I better go. If I stay much longer, others will wonder where I disappeared to. Vol? He throws me a surprised gaze, and I can see his brow narrow slightly in an annoyance. Oh, bless me. Should have used his full name, but fuck it. Thanks. Hmm. He shrugs, leaving me alone, and I return to the bed. I plop onto the mattress, bouncing up and down a bit, trying to calm myself down. I really hope I didn't annoy him as much as it seemed I did. The delicious, meaty smell that drifts through the air from the parcel invites me to dig in once again. My mood instantly lifts, if only slightly, as I bite into another succulent cut. It's tasty, but I really wouldn't mind having something else to go with it. Bread! I close my eyes, instantly smiling upon the recollection of, recollection of what bread is. The crunchy rim of the freshly baked loaf, the smell of it as it came straight out of the oven. How do I even know these things? I shrug, continuing to eat. No point dwelling on it if I can't really do anything about it. Rennick's right. Everything will be revealed in time. If I can randomly remember what bread is, I'm sure I'll remember something more tangible from my previous life. Previous life? I stop chewing and chuckle, considering what I'm actually saying. Whatever happened before these wolves found me seems completely separated from who I am now. Almost as if I've been severed from my past. I look at the crumpled cloth containing my dinner. I only ate half of it not less. The portion if is generous, true, but I also lost my appetite. What is exactly going on with me? I have no idea. I fold the cloth back up, deciding to keep the rest of the meat for later. Slowly, I approach the small dresser, the very same one I had climbed when I first set my eyes on Volger. My feet brush an object across the floor and I notice the comb still lying there. I pick it up with a smile, remembering my defiant stand against the black wolf. With a shrug, I open the drawer from which I retrieved it and place it back in there. I shut it, not even looking inside. I'm a guest here. I shouldn't pry. Gently, I set the parcel down on the flat top and turn to approach the door. From what I understand, this this house has at least one more room. I'm curious to see it. I put my ear to the door, trying to determine if anyone's there. Rannock? I mutter, mostly to confirm what I already know. I slowly crack the door of the doors open to see what's actually behind them. The room is similar in size to the bedchamber I woke up in. However, it has two windows instead of one. I can see the orange glow of a large bonfire coming from outside, and I hear the sound of wolves talking and laughing. It almost makes me want to approach the window and have a look, but I realize I'd immediately be spotted. My pale skin would reflect in the glow of the fire, making me look like a ghost behind the glass. I sigh and instead look around the room properly. There's a table with a set of chairs, another cupboard, and a large fireplace. All of it looks comfy, but incredibly rustic. Hmm. Another thing I know. This is an incredibly old-timey looking house. Though, what a normal house should look like, I can't call. I frown, realizing there's no other bed. There's only a stack of blankets in front of the hearth. Renek gave me his own bed. I approach his makeshift bedding, crouching down beside it. 
I can tell it was slept in recently, strands of gray fur dotting the fabric. How long was I out before I woke up for the first time? A shadow moves by the front window, causing me to drop my knee drop to my knees, hiding out of sight. There's a lot of movement outside, so the village is still up and going despite the darkness. I can't tell the time, though. The passage of time is almost impossible to work out here, and although I don't know why, not being able to measure it fills me with an incredible frustration. What would I feel the need to know what time it is? Night is night. Where does the idea to even measure it come from? I shake my head. All this is giving me a massive headache. I look around to find something to wash the meat down and find a jug on the table. I grab a cup and pour myself a glass. Talking, taking, talking, taking a reluctant sip. I half expected wine or ale, but thankfully it's just plain water. Oh, alright guys, perfect place to end it there. Alarm Chan has spoken. I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been a new episode of Far Beyond the World. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. One second. Alright, there we go. Bye-bye!